Large language models like GPT-3 have proven to be incredibly capable when asked about commonly known subjects or topics that they would have received a large quantity of training data for. Here I ask about geospatial intelligence, and it gives me a well-reasoned and factual response. However, when asked about topics that include data they have not been trained on, they either state that they do not possess the knowledge, or worse, can hallucinate plausible answers. Here, the model has not heard of Saif and Nzuri, which is unsurprising. The way to deal with this lack of knowledge is through providing factual information contained within the prompt given to the model itself. It is critical that the model provide reliable, factual results and to be able to quickly sift through volumes of data in order to pull out relevant insights. In this demonstration, we use eight documents from the International Crisis Group. These are comprehensive documents that cover various causes of conflict, provide detailed analysis, and offer practical solutions, and these eight documents comprise about 200,000 words. This is two orders of magnitude more than GPT-3 can accept as a prompt, and so we need to take a different approach. As an example of what can go wrong if you use too large a prompt, here we prompt GPT-4, an even larger model, with 800 lines of a computer program written in C++. Since the prompt is more than the model can ingest, its behavior is unpredictable, and instead of answering the prompt correctly, it gives a short movie review of the 1999 movie, The Matrix. To solve this problem, we upload all eight of our PDFs into an application on Clarify's portal. The PDFs are automatically split into chunks of 300 words each, saving the metadata which contains the chunk source, page number, chunk index, and text length. The chunks can start in the middle of a sentence or end in the middle of a sentence. They are clearly not ideal for human understanding, but the platform is able to generate embeddings for each one. An embedding is a vector that represents the meaning in a given piece of text. Since we have 478 text chunks, we can use the embeddings to find the most appropriate text to answer a given prompt. Let's see how this works. When we give the platform a query, such as, find the documents about terrorism, it calculates the embedding for that query. It then mathematically compares the query to all the saved embeddings for the text chunks and finds the most relevant text to the question. It provides the source, the page number, and the similarity score for each document it has found. It also identifies people, such as Norden Top and Saifa Denzuri, organizations such as Al-Qaeda and Crisis Group, locations such as Bali and Iraq, time and dates, miscellaneous, and sources. Let's take a closer look at one individual, Safai Denzuri. First, we choose which of the identified documents to examine. We start with document one, which was considered the most similar to the query. We are given both a summary and a list of sources of that summary. In fact, each of those sources was summarized through the Langchain library before being summarized into a single summary. When viewing the text as a whole, we can see why this was necessary, as all the combined chunks identified in that table comprise more than 5,000 words. This is still too long to use as a prompt in the GPT-3 model, and summarization of the individual parts is key. At this point, we can effectively chat with the document. Behind the scenes, the factual data is prepended before the question, along with the instructions to only rely on the given information and to not use any outside knowledge, and we have our answer. We have a short biography of Safai and Zuri, which was not part of the GPT-3 training data and is not known to the model outside of the facts we have provided. What's more, since the model has been instructed to not provide any answers outside of the context it was given, when asked about a popular internet personality which would be well known to GPT-3, it simply states that this person is not part of the factual information. This is extremely important, as it assures us that the model will not include outside information or hallucinate when it is unsure. We also have the ability to investigate geographical locations and plot them on a map. Here we ask the question, find me all text of the country that Nurdin Mohammed Top resides. Use a radius of 10 kilometers. Luckily, the similarity search still works on broken English. As before, we're provided with a list of source chunks where location data was found. Unfortunately, since the location data was only provided as Indonesia, we are not able to zero in on a specific region, and instead the location is identified as the very center of the country. Perhaps he lives on a boat? Hitting summarize again, we get a final summary of the information pertaining to Nordin Muhammad Top's location, and this concludes the demo. Thanks for watching.